is Todd Crawford. Thanks so much for coming on. We're going to talk about the Lisa Colagrassi Foundation. Lisa was a reporter at WABC in New York City who had a brain aneurysm and died. 2015 March, it's been just over a year. Tell me about the days that led up to that. Well, for a period of about six weeks, uh, maybe two or three days a week uh, over that time period, she would walk through the door uh, at 2.30 in the afternoon, which is the usual Because she worked time. a morning shift. Yeah, she worked a morning shift, usually arrived home around 2.30 in the afternoon, and the first words out of her mouth were, I have the worst headache of my life. And maybe three weeks um, after experiencing these headaches, she did the exact same thing one day and said, my head is absolutely killing me. I have the worst headache of my life. And I said, honey, don't you think that we should go get that checked because you've been complaining of these headaches now she for taking three weeks, aspirin or Advil Motrin, or something? Okay. and she said, you know, no, just like any other woman would do. I think that, you know, they chalk it up to the stress of work, and she said, you know, everything between work and I'm here at home, I don't have time. So, you know, because we didn't know what a brain aneurysm was, let alone what the signs and symptoms are for brain aneurysms, we dismissed it and let it go, and two weeks later, later she passed away on the job. Tell me about that day. <clears throat> Beautiful, you know, spring March uh, day, bright, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. And she called the house at 7.30 in the morning, as she did every morning, to, you know, kind of make sure the kids, the boys had everything they needed for school, to tell them that she loved them, uh, to tell me that she loved me. I was on my way back from a meeting around 9.15 when I got the phone call and uh, from one of the top neurosurgeons in the country out of New York City. And when you get that call like that from a top neurosurgeon in one of the top hospitals in the country, you know that your life has changed forever. Uh, he said, we have your wife. We are, don't really know, you know, she collapsed. Uh, that's about all we know right now. And I said, guys, you need to check her head because she's been complaining of massive headaches for the last six weeks. You need to check her head. And. Uh, they called me back after running some additional tests, maybe 45 minutes later, and said she'd had a massive uh, brain hemorrhage. Do we know what causes that? Some people will say, oh, the stress of a job, or this mm -hmm. or that. It's, it's a weakness, correct? A brain aneurysm is a thinning or weakness in one of the walls of a blood vessel in the brain as a result of the constant blood flow and pressure against that weakening wall to the point where it eventually balloons outward almost like a bulge on a tire and eventually will rupture and you have brain leaking into uh, the brain and begins to shut down bodily functions and organs immediately. Uh, the best that we know or can tell is that some of the risk factors include hypertension, smoking, drug, alcohol abuse, none of which apply to Lisa. I think the bigger point, Ann, is that this is a disease that is not known. Nobody has moved the needle forward. We're going to. The research in this area and this disease is about 10 to 15 years behind where it needs to be. And cumulatively, there's probably about $500,000 a year that is sent towards research privately. From a national perspective, brain aneurysms are more prevalent than breast cancer. And I can give you the numbers. Give and me the numbers of yeah. people who have brain So aneurysms. just let me finish the, the research sure. thought that breast cancer receives over $600 million a year annually through the federal government. Brain aneurysms, which are more prevalent, receive about a million dollars a year. So there's a huge disparity. About the official statistics from the NIH, National Institute of Health, are 6 million people, estimated 6 million people in the country have a brain aneurysm. Of those six million, there are 40 to 50,000 ruptures a year. Of the ruptures, 50% instantly die, and of the other 50%, a third die within months from complications. Another third will live but walk around for the remainder of their life with permanent neurological deficits, and the other third are unaffected and go on to lead normal lives. Those are the official statistics. The Lisa Calagrassi Foundation asserts that those numbers are probably more like 9 to 10 million people and probably 70, 80,000 ruptures a year. Because 
there's no diagnosis today for brain aneurysms. There's no screenings. The only way that you are diagnosed with a brain aneurysm is you have a rupture that kills you or you're lucky to survive or you're sent in to a hospital for a completely unrelated medical procedure that requires you to get CAT scan or MRA and the results come back and say, oh, by the way, you have a brain aneurysm. You're so lucky to find it. They're lucky to find it. So most people who have one are completely undiagnosed, walking around with a ticking time bomb in their head that they could go off any, at any moment, and they don't know it. When Lisa died, your two sons were how old? They were 10 and 14. 10 and 14. You go on alone, but your mission is to find what? The mission is, I don't think, unlike a lot of other diseases, ALS, Parkinson's, breast cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, I think that we could be at some point in the world talking about a breast cancer-free or Alzheimer's-free world. I don't think that we're talking about a brain aneurysm-free world at any point. So I think that the best case that we're looking at is to reduce the number of fatalities through early detection, early diagnosis, and management of the brain aneurysms until there's enough research money that is poured in to study what really causes, what's the cause and effect of, you know, brain aneurysms developing. There's a hereditary component, sure, but what about, since, you know, none of the risk factors apply to Lisa, what about things like stress? What about, you know, lack of sleep, which over time can take their toll on one's quality of life, and maybe they also contribute to the development of a brain aneurysm. So our focus with the Lisa Calagrassi Foundation is first and foremost awareness, to get the awareness and messaging out for what are the classic signs and symptoms of a brain aneurysm that some people do experience like Lisa, because had we known you know, then what we know now, mm -hmm. maybe the outcome would have been different and she may be doing this work with me. Because she was a longtime reporter in New York City, this made headlines around, around the, the world. world. Everybody knew about it. Right. What happened with those headlines? What happened to your family with that? Was it a new awareness? What, how did you handle all of that on top of her death? Well, there was a, a, a real groundswell and an outpouring of, of support and love of, you know, from people all over the world and people reaching out saying, you know, you know, what can we do? How can we help? And I think once we launched, officially launched the foundation uh, last September, people started reconnecting with us and reaching back out a second time saying, we want to get involved, we'd love to help you. So I think we have been very fortunate and very blessed from, from that standpoint. We're trying to leverage her notoriety and, and popularity um, and the resources and contacts that she had and the outpouring of support from around the world to our benefit and uh, are quickly on our way to becoming the worldwide leader, you know, in the fight against brain aneurysms. And I'm confident, very confident in saying that the Lisa Caligrassi Foundation will, over the next few years, become synonymous with brain aneurysms, much like Susan G. Komen has become for breast cancer over the last 20. You are relentless with this. This is your only job. Right. To find ways to help people with brain aneurysms. You're steadfast in this. This is your gift to Lisa, to your family. How did you mobilize and say, this is what I'm gonna do? I think when you're faced with a pivot point like we were in your life, and I think everybody does encounter pivot points, and this obviously being one of the biggest that you'll ever face, you're faced with you know, two options. Continue down the same track that you're going on in life or turn a personal tragedy into a positive for others around the world. And to me, it was an absolute no-brainer. So, you know, even though the Lisa Caligrassi Foundation bears Lisa's name, uh, it's on the front door and always will be, the foundation is not about Lisa. It's about everybody around the world who has been affected by this disease at one point or another, lost a loved one, survived a brain aneurysm, 
and the estimated you know eight to ten million people in the country who are walking around with one and don't know it and that's just in the u.s. we've been contacted by organizations outside of the u.s. in other countries whose populations are greatly more affected because you know women and, and african americans are fifty percent more likely to develop a brain aneurysm than anyone else so they have submitted these organizations a formal requests for assistance to us to help fund their efforts in their countries where on a per capita basis the percentages are much larger because the populations are are, are, are African American and uh, so we're in the process of you know in a dialogue with them about you know how do we partner with one another could we put you know a Lisa Caligrassi Foundation subsidiary in those countries to further the effort and they're really looking to us as you know, the leader in the space and lead the, lead the way in this fight. How hard is the work? Well, it's probably the most difficult and the hardest uh, I have ever worked over the course of the last, you know, eight months for sure. While but you're probably, grieving. Yeah, sure. And you try to turn that grief into a positive and, you know, over the last eight months, we have been credited with saving the lives of eight people from around the world, six in the U.S. and two overseas. So, because of awareness? Because of the awareness efforts, us doing interviews like this one, talking about, you know, the classic signs and symptoms, the worst headache of your life, sensitivity to light, a sharp localized pain behind one of your eyes, um, you know, numbness and tingling. If you're predisposed, if you're not somebody who's predisposed to headaches and all of a sudden you begin to experience regular recurring headaches like Lisa did, you should go get diagnosed and go seek the, the attention of a medical professional as opposed to trying to self-diagnose like we did. So those efforts have, you know, people saw what we did and, and went and immediately were experiencing one of the signs and symptoms. They went and sought the help of a medical professional and needed to, their aneurysm needed immediate treatment which saved their life. So, you know, that's very gratifying and, um, you know, the work is, it's the hardest job I've ever done in my entire life or over the course of my entire career but it's the most rewarding it's something that needs to be done and this is my new life mission what kind of help do you need for the foundation well we've spent the last seven eight months building the nuts hey, and bolts you're moving fast. yeah I very mean, fast. You, yeah I mean we're I'm a go-getter and I'm very aggressive and I'm, I don't take no for an answer I'm relentless and uh, you know, we've spent the last eight months n assembling the nuts and bolts of the foundation. So the board of directors, very talented, independent, diversified people who have a lot of contacts and resources that they will help lend to this. Um, you know, medical advisory board, some of the best from, you know, around the U.S., but we're in conversations to add and you're just uh, cold some cold. of the top neurosurgeons outside the country because the vision is to not only become the U.S. leader, in the fight against brain aneurysms, but the worldwide leader. So we're building a global organization that's gonna be around for a long time and, and going to ensure our long-term success. And, um, you know, so we need additional people. We need, you know, people to get to a point. Our biggest need right now is we're finally at a point where we can turn our attention to fundraising. You know, are there corporate partners out there that we should be approaching, be speaking with, who would be interested in joining us in this fight and you know I think there's a really unique opportunity in in that regard because if somebody attaches their name to breast cancer today or ALS or Parkinson's those are so big their pockets are so deep there's so many partners involved that you it's very hard to carve out a unique position somebody could come in here with the Lisa Caligrassi Foundation and take an ownership position and really make a difference for a relatively small amount of money um, and so, you know, we are having conversations. We've had people reach out to us. There is interest. Uh, we have a groundswell of momentum that is just building, and uh, we've got a very big announcement uh, coming up uh, this week, tomorrow, uh, with that we're entering into a really big uh, public relations uh, relationship with two of the top five public relations firms in the world who are going to help us launch a national campaign to create awareness and education for brain aneurysms and the signs and symptoms. How wonderful. And something's coming up this fall, too. What yeah, have you we put have together? a very big, our first you know, foot in the water, if you will, and in terms of fundraising with a 
very big uh, gala, fundraising gala in New York City, September 29th, it's a Thursday night. Uh, Gretchen Carlson from Fox News is emceeing the gala. We've got um, honoring a couple of people, one from NASCAR, one from the NFL. The NFL Players Choir is going to perform at the evening. Um, and it's going to be a spectacular night. And the one thing that I'm really proud of that is probably more important, I think, than the fundraising component is that this is the first time, it's historic in the sense that this is the first time ever that all major parties in the brain aneurysm industry will come together under one roof in the same night. And so they're looking to us to lead the, the way, lead this fight, and you know we've reached out you know, and I think done a fairly decent job of, of making them feel welcome and inviting them in to say, listen, be a part of this. We're going to make history along the way, and we are going to become the next, you know, become a part of the national health care dialogue in this country, just like breast cancer is. And, you know, we're going to save a lot of lives along the way, sounds which is like, the most important thing. Sounds like you should head to Congress and get some monies there, too. Yeah, and we will. And, and that's, part of the, that's part of the business plan. There definitely will be a congressional, uh, you know, full-time lobbying you know, effort that's already, you know, we've been discussed and are in conversations right now with the right people. Uh, so this is, you have to be moving, you know, a multifaceted approach, you know, and, and parallel paths at the same time. So there's, there's no rest for the weary. Life comes at you fast. You never know what's around the corner. Right. This happened to you never in your wildest imagination. What have you learned from all of this? Honestly, the biggest takeaway for me and my two boys is that life is short. And when you lose your spouse and mother, you take a look at life and you say, what is the purpose of life? And very quickly it comes to you that the purpose in life is to love everyone, to care about others, and to try to make a positive difference in the world. And that's what the journey here in the physical is all about. We've been fortunate, we've been very blessed in that we've had 13 different, uh, very vivid, extremely vivid experiences from Lisa since she's passed. Um, so you feel I know, her around you. Well, there's no question about it. And uh, uh, they're very special experiences that have occurred. And uh, she's connected us, she's guiding our efforts. She would be here doing the exact same thing had she survived. And um, you know she's endorsing this 100% of, of the way, and and so that's what life is about. It's not about greed. It's not about power, status, money, any of that stuff. What matters is how are at the end of the day how are you going to define your life, your legacy, your journey in the physical world before you depart to the afterlife? And it's about making a positive difference in the lives of others around the world. Todd Crawford, thanks so much for being on. Continued success, and thank you for helping so many others. Thanks, Anne. God bless. I made a trivial pursuit, spent one this in. Who is this girl? I spent all night kissing, and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I found the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Just to save time, I skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you